This is breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, a 10k race in Spain that was covered by Sport Public TV. This coverage is very, very good of Yomif Kajolcha versus Joshua Cheptegei in a 10k world record attempt. This only just happened. I'll leave a link down below to the original coverage. Please subscribe to Sport Public TV to stay up to date with the events that they cover. I'm going to be reacting and commentating this race because it blew my mind. I didn't actually hear about this until it already happened. But during this race, which is called the Villa de la Reda, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, I probably butchered the name, but the, the name is very hard to pronounce. This is a 10k race, a road race in Spain, which saw Joshua Cheptegei and Yomif Kajelcha attempting the Ronitz Kiprutos world record, which is currently 26 minutes and 24 seconds. Now this is a very fast time, which is around 4.16 per mile. That's no joke. I made videos about this in the past, about how fast Ronitz Kiprutos personal record really is and how it will take something special to beat it. So right out of the start you can see how fast all of these athletes are running. I couldn't actually see Yomif Kajelcha. Uh, anytime uh, is he going to appear at the front I don't know because uh, they have one or two paces in this race which I think is fantastic. Yomif Kajelcha representing Adidas which is rather unusual because I noticed that he used to run for Nike and now he is uh, changed to Adidas, which is very interesting. If anyone knows why, comment down below because usually Nike have been dominating for years now and I would have thought that Yomif would have been offered more from Nike. So right now, we are a few minutes into the race. Joshua Cheptegei is around second. He is kind of uh, not really holding on to Yomif right now. He's allowing a gap to form. It's understandable guys because they are running at around about 4.10 per mile at the very beginning which is stupidly fast. Now to know if Yomif Kajelcha is actually going to break this world record we need to see if he is running the first 5k fast enough so he would need to run it in under 13 minutes and 12 seconds. If he manages to do that then he will be on course for a world record. Right now we have one of the pacers doing a fantastic job here, also an adidas runner, he has a very good stride, his uh, cadence is fast, his leg turnover is efficient and another thing, his arm carriage, if you notice his arm carriage is very close to his body, this allows him to stay more efficient and his biomechanics probably reduce his chance of injuries. So during this point in the race, Joshua Cheptegei was still in contention. He was holding on and doing a pretty good job of keeping the paces even and not allowing Kajelcha to get away. However, as the race began to progress, things started to get bad for Joshua Cheptegei. Here we have the woman leader. This lady was doing a fantastic job. It was a mixed 10k, so she's in with the men, which in my opinion is actually a good thing because it allows them to run even faster and makes the standard very high. And when the athletes have more pressure, they tend to run faster. An example of this would be Paula Radcliffe's former marathon world record of 2 hours 15 minutes at the London Marathon way back almost, well, over a decade ago now. We're talking two decades ago where she was in a mixed race with the men. So, what are we looking at here? We're seven minutes into the race, so we're approaching the first three kilometers. The pacer is still doing a good job. However, unfortunately, he was working a lot harder than we would have expected and ends up dropping out very soon. This meant that Kajeltra was left to run the whole way all by himself. As you can see, Joshua is way too far behind at this point and he is a good 60 meters, I would say that's between 40 to 60 meters behind, possibly even more as the camera uh, visuals can be deceiving depending on the angle. So here we are, they've gone over the 3k mark now, they've been over it for around half a minute and uh, Yomif is really looking good. But you can always tell when a pacer is getting exhausted because they move to the side and they just basically stop pacing the athlete. This isn't exactly pacing, I would criticise this by saying it's more like just running with the athlete. The whole point of pacing is to be in front of the athlete, blocking any wind, particulates, 
or any amount of obstruction, no matter how small it may be. Because when you're running this fast, every single second counts. We're talking milliseconds. These guys are sprinting for 20 odd minutes. It's no joke. They are super human. Right, so now we are 11 minutes in. Chapter guys nowhere to be seen. The pacer seems to have dropped right back. And I just don't understand what is going on in this race right now. It has really, really come up against Kajelcha. You know, I was hoping that someone could stay with him to at least halfway, but that's not happened. So now he's going to have to run basically 6 or 7k all by himself. And trying to do that at sub 420 mile pace is going to be near on impossible right now. So let's keep watching and see. You can see Joshua Chapter Guy moving up into second. He is just miles away at this point. He is, uh, that, that looks to me like 150 to 200 meters behind Chapter Guy. Uh, good Jelcher, sorry. So here is the halfway split. Is he on pace? Yes, he actually is, surprisingly. 13 minutes and 10 seconds, unofficially, by my judgment. That would give him a finish time of 26 minutes and 20 seconds. This is very, very fast. I am looking forward to this. As you can see, Kajelcha is checking his GPS. As I mentioned in today's video about Bekele, Bekele wears a GPS also as it helps him pace well. However, sometimes athletes can actually slow themselves down by ch checking the GPS watch too often. And that's something I would recommend is if you want to run a faster time, do not wear a GPS watch. Instead, ask your friend to pace you and they can look at the GPS watch and stress about it, rather than you. So now that we know Kajelcha is actually on world record pace, however it's only by 4 seconds, that is worrying because 4 seconds can be lost easily over 5k. Chapter guy is nowhere to be seen, he's looking smooth though I must admit in my opinion. His arm carriage is high, he's not rocking to side to side, his uh, turnover is clean and sharp. He looks like a very efficient runner here and uh, I don't think he's had many injuries over the past few months so things are looking good for him but I'm kind of disappointed because I feel like he could have definitely kept up with Yomif if he had not let him go at the beginning. 17 minutes into this race. We don't have long left guys. We've got around 9 minutes remaining and things are starting to really get serious now. As you can see, Chapter Guy is trying everything he can to catch back up with Yomif Kajelcha. It's just not working. Yomif Kajelcha is breaking away, even though it seems to me that Kajelcha is actually slowing down, which is so disappointing. And we know the reason he's slowing down is because there's no one with him. There's no one running the race with him. The pace is not there. Uh, and all he's got is these bikers around him who are, you know, kind of uh, not really pacing him. They're just, uh, if anything, not aiding him because they're pumping out uh, small amounts of pollution that could go into his lungs and affect his body's efficiency. But that's minute, you know, that's a bit of a uh, nitpicky stuff. But overall, you know, Kajelcha has now got 200 meters, I think. I mean, that may even be more. Look at that, guys. Uh, wow. We're looking at like two to maybe 300 meters now. Kajelcha is absolutely flying. Unfortunately, he is currently slowing down. He's trying everything he can, but when the splits came through, people realized that he was now not operating on world record pace, and Chapter Guy was barely operating in sub 27 minute pace, which is kind of worrying considering how fast he's run over the track. I don't know if he hasn't been well recently. Since his marathon training, he overdid it a bit. He hit the wall at Valencia Marathon, had to be carried after the finish area to an ambulance. You know, he's really struggled over the past few weeks and uh, I really, really pray that he can get back to proper, decent fitness. So Yome Kajelcha is flowing like mad, but the question is, what time is he gonna run? We're at 20 minutes basically here. Joshua Chapter Guy is also having to run in no man's land because they, these two are both miles ahead of all the standard of the elite men in this race, including the Spanish elite men, uh, any of the other Africans in this race, and so on. But 21 minutes, there's now around 1k remaining, or just over 1k. This is where it really turns into a sprint finish, or in their case, they just have to hold on for dear life. One thing we can say for certain is that Joshua Chapter Guy is most definitely not catching up to Yomif Kajelcha, as there is over 300 meters now currently between them, or around 250. 
The problem is, Joshua looks so relaxed, he doesn't even look like he's trying, and I don't mean that in a nasty way, but compare Yomis form, look, it's all over the place, you can tell he's kicking for dear life. He's uh, two minutes away from the finish, and he's rocking everywhere, his arm carriage is kind of sporadic, his cadence and his rhythm has gone all over the place, it's, uh, it's erratic, it's not flowing, which is a sign of an athlete who's drowning in lactic acid and uh, in hypoxia, and he is really out of his oxygen depth right now. He is literally suffocating, running for dear life. So, you know Yomif can really sense that finish line. He can smell it. It's within arm's reach. Unfortunately, it seemed like Chapter Guy gave up because he didn't get the win. Here is Yomif Kajelcha kicking and he is tying up so bad. Look at the restriction in those legs. If you ever get this at the end of a race, finish in training with some rollovers, 150 meter sprints where you increase. Doing this on tired legs will make you more efficient and better at sprint finishing. Oh my goodness me, he just missed it. 26 minutes and 34 to 35 seconds, unofficial in my uh, perspective. And here comes Chapter Guy jogging in. I don't know, will he break 27? Yep, just about. He's going to come in around about 26.51, 26.52, according to the official stopwatch timing. So there are the results in the bottom left. Pause the screen if you want to see those and take a look. He was around about 12 seconds too slow off of the world record, which is disappointing because... If you guys remembered, he went through the first 5k in 26.20 pace. And I believe that Yomif could have got really close if he had someone to run with that could keep up with him. Now the goal was that was supposed to be Joshua. And if that was the case, I reckon these guys would have got... Mm, they would have at least run sub 26.30, but possibly a world record. However, because that didn't happen... Yomif basically ran seven to seven and a half kilometers all by himself. Now what this meant is that he was not able to run behind someone, have a draft. He was not able to have that kind of mental boost knowing that someone was there that he could hold on to. Unfortunately, the guy at the beginning, who I assumed was a pacer, I have no idea, maybe he was actually a competitor because he seemed to just keep running. So I don't know what kind of tactics they were. A uh, mile PB and then jogged the last five miles. No idea what he was trying to do. But that kind of helped Yomif for the first 3k. Up until around 9 to 10 minutes. Until the guy dropped back miles. But unfortunately, Chepter guy was the one that really had the bad day today. And that's disappointing. I mean, believe it or not. Yes, I'm actually saying a 26.51 or 2 is a bad day. <laughs> That's how high the standards are nowadays, especially for the likes of the Ugandans who are on phenomenal form, especially Chep the guy who don't forget has world records on the track. So we're looking at a guy who is unbeatable in certain distances. I think Yomif went out there today with guts, determination, and I really am disappointed that this event wasn't advertised better. I feel like there would have been a better kind of uh, completion of viewers there would have been a better turnover a better popularity of the event had there been more advertising and also announcements that's why here on this channel i aim to do that one by covering these races because i like to actually give exposure to the athletes when i was younger i started training at my local club i've been running since i was around 12 years old i ran in cross country road races i ran for my county in dorset I ran at the English Championships, the British Championships, and I've always wondered, guys, when I was younger, I wanted to be a pro runner. However, it's very difficult because there's not much money in it, and the reason for that, in my opinion, is because there are not many viewers. So by creating this channel where I add my commentary, my coverage and reaction to these races, I believe that I am kind of helping the market of running, and I'm adding uh, more eyes to it. Which in turn is hopefully, even if it's just small, you know, I know I can't change entire markets and make running all of a sudden viral. But I know that I can help some of these athletes by at least shouting out their names, covering the races and doing things like this, which I hope they appreciate. 
because I might make some mistakes here and there regarding pronouncing their name or something like that or pronouncing the race name in today's example. However, I believe that by covering these races and covering these athletes' performances, I am adding value to this community. Thank you to everyone who has supported my channel thus far. Tomorrow, we have Ken and Issa Bekele racing in the New York City Half Marathon. If you want to watch that race, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I'm going to be keeping you guys up to date with all of the latest coverage of this event. It's going to be crazy. I mean, it's been a mad weekend already. I didn't even know this race was on because unfortunately I didn't hear about it. I don't think the advertising was very good in my opinion. The companies um, that were creating it and setting it up could have done a better job because think about it, they had two of the best athletes in the world, one of which had a world record, well has a world record. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing, that's my criticisms. Go and check out the sports TV uh, source down below, please subscribe to them and uh, check in tomorrow for tomorrow's Bekele performance. See you then.